This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. What's up? It's your boy, the Ben Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Straight time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and see the throw hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. Real quick, one more comment. Wet towel on an unmade bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no! These are all strong, though. VD, I'm glad you joined us. You're going to love today's shot. Oh, oh, I was going to take to show you the story earlier, but you're in one of your 8,000 freaking meetings. You're welcome. Yes. We should have also thrown in yeah. uh, television selections. Oh, uh, the TV shows? Yeah. Yeah, some shows I'm smart enough where I'm like, like when she watches Euphoria, right? I've seen bits and pieces of the show. However. It's fine, but I know not to say anything. Right. You'd have to suck me out of the carpet with a wet vac if I even suggested that she turn that off. But then you still hear it if you decide to go into a different room. Correct. And watch something different. And now you're the bad person because oh, no. you didn't want to stay there with them. Like trying with the show. I just don't like it. The show's right. fine. I just, I don't want to be there. Why okay. don't you want to sit with me? Well, because I don't like this show. Why do you leave when I watch The Mandalorian? It's the same thing. Right. right. It's like anti-interest. Not saying... All right, today we chose 57-year-old Christopher Adams of Shelbyville, Indiana. Hmm. Christopher is an egg farmer. Paramedics were called to his home around 11.30 p.m. when he was found naked, bloody, and unresponsive (laughs) on the hen house floor. (laughs) (laughs) Paramedics arrived. They found Christopher bloody and... with a five-pound chicken sticking out of his wreck. (laughs) What? What? (laughs) What? A live chicken that was, quote, no, loudly clucking. Paramedics briefly tried to remove the agitated bird, but to no avail. Christopher and his ass chicken were then transported to the hospital. <laughs> chicken, yeah. According to the doctor who extracted the bird after an extremely delicate seven-hour surgical wow. intervention, they're calling it, uh-huh. they say both the man and the animal would have died if they'd waited any longer, which, by the way, is what doctors say about anything. Right. Quote, the bird was dying of suffocation when it got here and it already badly lacerated the patient's bowels in a desperate mm. attempt to get out. Mm-hmm. And it was still mm-hmm. gashing like crazy. Mm. Beer butt chicken. <laughs> <laughs> the hen was finally extracted the following morning, suffering only minor physical injuries from its ordeal. Mm. While Mr. Adams, he needed seven blood transfusions and more than 780 wow. stitches. Oh, The doctor says it's a miracle that both the farmer and his animal are still alive. In question, what caused the bird to get there? The doctor who extracted the hen from Mr. Adams' rectal cavity says, oh, we already covered that. Yes, both of them survived. Couldn't believe it. The ASPCA has taken the hen into custody for the duration of its investigation into a five-pound living chicken was inserted into his butt. (laughs) We'll let you do the math. Wow. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! Yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! The Men's Room presents Profile This. Hey, it's Stephen Throw Hill. Could you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, <coughs> we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. <laughs> Hello, Chris. Welcome to the men's room. 
Hola. Hola. All right, Chris, you understand how to play this here game? Yes, I do. Fantastic. Please keep your enthusiasm at a respectable level. You have your choice of one of three stories. The wonderful world of drugs. Bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, interior decorating. Where you guessed the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. Let's do the drugs. I get the feeling you say that a lot. All right. Oh, yeah. For this particular, you can barely tell them. Oh, Real sad. Oh, yeah. Oh, we go a little local here. We go to Marysville, Washington, where police said a large amount of drugs, a handgun, and thousands of dollars in cash were found in a car where the driver had been slumped over the wheel. An officer was dispatched to the report of a driver slumped over in a running Jaguar. He arrived and found an unconscious man in the driver's seat, but once awakened, the man provided his driver's license and he admitted that he might have an arrest warrant. After a discussion with the officer, the man got out and he was arrested for the warrant that he thought might be on him. Now, during a search of that man, he was found to have $2,700 in cash. When the officer went to lock the Jaguar, he saw a handgun on the driver's seat where the man had been sitting. So the Jaguar was impounded. The officer obtained a search warrant to recover the gun and related accessories. And once the warrant was granted, the officer discovered that the gun had been reported stolen out of Everett. Now, while the officer was searching a backpack that was in the car for other guns, he found a large container that had a lot of drugs. Because the search warrant was for firearms and accessories, the officer stopped, applied for a second search warrant for evidence of possession of narcotics with the intent to sell. And once the second warrant was granted, the officer found $35,654 in cash, plus a bunch of other drugs. And they say the approximate street value of the drugs they found in his backpack $200,000. Damn. Right. This guy's wrong. That's why he's driving a Jag, right? But the question is, what drugs did he not have? Did he not have heroin, oxys, ecstasy, or cocaine? Uh, I think it's definitely the oxys. I'm definitely going to go with the oxys. Hmm. You should be a motivational speaker, man. You should give the speech like before the Super Bowl. What do you sound like when you're having sex, Chris? Do you get real excited? Oh, yeah, you do. Once again, bedroom colors. Here are the seven words you know. can't say on the radio. I don't know. You already gave an answer. It's awesome. Sucker. What are you guys? Heroin. Uh, you want heroin? I'm going to go ecstasy to see again and see what happens. All right, the question is, what did he not have? Correct. Was it heroin, oxys, ecstasy, or cocaine next? Oh, my bad. That was a tease. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. Oh, drat, I was driving along minding my own business when that vulgar leech hit my beamer with his pickup truck. I fear I've fractured my clavicle. I say, old boy, don't simply put it in the hands of your insurance company to sort it out. Talk with the dedicated road solicitors at the Advocates Law Firm. Pipe down, you old sod. The Advocates will see your case through to the bitter end and won't sleep a fortnight until they have victory in their grasp. Jolly good, old man, jolly good indeed. You get injured, the Advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com 99.9 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Categories, drugs on profile this. We've got a driver in Marysville. He was slumped over the wheel of his Jaguar. 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 Huh? Man had a warrant. He was arrested. He also had drugs and guns and money in his car. So what drug did he not have? Because he had $200,000 worth of drugs. It, yeah, he was doing all right. So was it heroin, oxys, ecstasy, or cocaine? Uh, let's see. Chris here went with oxys. That is incorrect. He had oxys. He had oxys on him. 
Ted, you said heroin. Damn it. Brother, he's got heroin. All right. You need heroin? That's your guy. I think I made us find out his name, too. Somebody chimed in and said, hey, I don't know this for a fact, but I think it might be his, my neighbor because his jag was towed like two weeks ago. I have not seen him since. Then he dropped a name, but the name is not presented in the news article, okay. so I don't know if All it's right. him. Plus, he lives in Marysville. We know who it is. Doug. Goddamn Doug. Mm-hmm. If his Classic name is Doug, Doug tell me great. Doug didn't have any ecstasy. Oh, and Miles, you said ecstasy. Damn it, Doug, that's all I wanted. Just wanted to go out to the gorge and trip bees for two days. Man, ecstasy in the gorge is awesome. I want to hug people like the woman in the lobby. Uh, Now for all TV news all time, time for TV time. Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV time with Ted. (laughs) Man, oh man, did you miss that? Uh, All right. Your choices, you got the Jimmys. Fallon and Kimmel. Seth Byers. All right. Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it late night? It is right there with Tyler Lawrence. Guys have teams of talented writers who help them come up with their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine, is this an actual late night joking from whom? Or could it be a The Ted Smith original? With a new season of The Kardashians coming to Hulu, some critics say the show is too fake. The Kardashians claim the show is real, and the only thing fake on it are their bodies. <laughs> the Ted Smith. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason I know it's you, not know it's you, the only reason I suspected it was you, for whatever reason, you cannot make fun of someone's body on TV, right? What do you mean? They like, make someone's fun of someone's body on TV, they, they end up in trouble. Oh, because it's fake, yeah. Even I, if it's the fact I mean, that look, the things are Chloe looks great, but like that is that's a different person. Oh, dude, I'd have sex with any of them, even though I know it's like you are like Stretch Armstrong. I get that. But you're a Stretch Armstrong. I want to have sex with you. Chipotle is going to start using a robot to make their tortilla chips, and they're calling it Chippy. They have a robot to clean the bathrooms, but we can't say his name on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Myers. Found. Kimmel? Chipotle is going to start using nope. a robot Found. to make the tortilla chips. Yeah. I'm going to call you Chippy. Yeah. <laughs> They also have a robot to clean the bathroom, but we can't say his name on TV. Oh, hey! But it sounded like a Fallon joke. That's what I was like, come on! The Senate passed a, uh, passed... <clears throat> Senate passed. Senate passed a bill to make daylight savings time permanent across the USA. Finally, a victory for your oven clock. <laughs> Seth Myers. <laughs> Fallon. That's Seth. The Senate passed a bill that would make daylight saving time permanent across the U.S. Finally, a rare victory for your oven clock. (laughs) According to a new study, older adults who walk between 6 and 8,000 steps a day are 50% less likely to die early and 50% more likely to get lost in a parking garage. (laughs) Myers. Found. Myers. According to a new study, older adults... Who walk between six and eight thousand steps a day are fifty percent less likely to die early and fifty percent more likely to be lost in a parking garage. <laughs> the CDC just lowered the COVID risk uh, level for cruise ships from high to moderate. However, the risk of getting salmonella from the chicken is still pretty much guaranteed. <laughs> Found. Yeah, found. Yeah, found. You guys hear about this? The CDC just lowered the COVID risk level for cruise ships from high to moderate. However, the risk of getting salmonella from the chicken is still pretty much guaranteed. <laughs> uh, obviously, everybody's all fired up. You got the uh, NCAA tournament starting. A lot of people watching that. Like I said, like, I know a ton of people that took take this Thursday and Friday off. Mm-hmm. Even, even without St. Patrick's Day, they will take off the Thursday and Friday of the sure. tournament. Which, I mean, if you're a sports fan, like, you know, football's football. It's hard to beat an NFL Sunday. Like, I, I love football. I, Saturday or weekends in the fall are awesome. You have college. You got soccer going. But for just pure sports viewing, like, this weekend is, is up there. It's pretty top notch. Well, it, you, everything else is kind of spread out. This just seems like it's one after another. It is, man. It's, I mean, with 60 do, some teams, it just it just keeps sort of like about it though. It's rolling over. I mean, yeah. you might get a day break, but there's games on that, that, that day that the team I love play. it, man. Yeah, like today, like this weekend, there's games on all the time, right? Because there's right there's 64 teams in the field. Sure. So you had what 32 games over two days. 
Yeah. And then, you got it, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I think the look of confirmation late, that's great, man. Right. right, and then even, uh, you know, when you get to the weekend, you're still going to have 32 teams, so 16 games. Oh, look at you go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's eight games a day. And <laughs> the, uh, they do a very good job now of, like, when, when we watched it, you had to, like, you saw, like, the scores in the corner, and they'd cut to those games. Right. But now they've staggered it. That basically, you can watch the end of almost every game. Sure. Mm-hmm. If they did a regional here in Seattle... A climate pledge, I wouldn't. We would have a huddle in the in the room. And say, Can we get tickets? Let, let, let's take a, a let, let's take the day off. They had a, a final four in Seattle. Before. Yeah, yeah, let's take that Friday off and let's go watch whoever in the hell is in the bracket and watch at least one or two games. Right, right. And it depends on where you live, right? So I've seen Maryland play in the tournament out in Spokane. Mm-hmm. Now it helped that I was living in Seattle. Sure. So that's an easier drive. But when you go to a small town, man, and like when you go for like a football, like I've been to a bowl game. But there's a large amount of fans there. But when you go to a, sorry, Spokane, you're a smaller town. But when you go to a smaller town and you see other Maryland people, I mean, it's like you've known each other forever. Oh, sure. And it's yeah. just like, hell yeah. yeah, man. Like, look at that. Even if you go to like an alumni association viewing party at a bar. Correct. You know, same difference. But it's weird how things work, right? So living in Seattle as a Ravens fan, if I see someone wearing Ravens gear, you become instant friends. Yeah. If you wear Steelers gear, we'll flip each other S. Now, if you leave the country and I see you wearing Steelers gear, we become friends again. Mm-hmm. NFL football, dog. I'm in yeah. your same division. And it's weird because if we met each other in the States, we talk smack. If we're outside mm-hmm. of the States, even though we're rivals in the same division, now all of a sudden we're buddies. And the weird thing is, is that no matter what, you could have like a six foot seven biker dude with a big beard and tattoos, man. If he's wearing a Ravens hat, you got no problem going up going, bro, yeah, no. what's happening, man? <laughs> Bring it in, Ravens fan. Like, doesn't matter. Like, it just yeah. crosses the line of. You're a fan, I'm a fan. You know what I mean? It's I'm, all good. Yeah, it is. I still say the weirdest one. In Normally the I'm a racist, <laughs> yeah, but exactly. I'm this Cajun. Bring it in. <laughs> Go Ravens. Right. Uh, you probably experienced this. The, the weirdest one I had was just in London, because there's so many people in, like, other jerseys and, like, Right, it's kind of like college the jerseys Everyone wears everything. Hey, but then you start talking to them, and they're just like, I don't know, mate. So there, there, I'm, so I'm there was a, a decent number of Maryland fans in Spokane when you were over there. Right, and it's fun to go see them. But yeah, as I say, they, 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 yeah, and and it's it, but it's smaller. That, that's kind of my sure, point. Yeah. Like, so if you get a chance and your team's playing, obviously, if you're a Gonzaga fan and you're from Spokane, like you could go sure. see them every year. But I, I highly recommend it. It's a fun well, trip. That's why I said we do it. I mean, because I, you might plan a trip to a bowl game because the, the football team does well, but very rarely do people say I'm traveling to Indianapolis to watch my basketball team play in the first round, hoping that. Maybe I'll stay another night. Maybe, well, that's they'll, the they'll, maybe they'll win. So you, you don't even know how many hotel nights to get. Right. That's what makes it kind of dangerous home. and exciting. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Sigma Sports here a little bit. Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, they've left Fox Sports. They're going to ESPN for Monday Night Football. Which, I guess that makes sense. I mean, good for them. They were yeah. what, Fox's A1 team, as they call it. So Correct. So, right. Good for them. They got a bunch of money and stuff. It does seem odd. I, I guess it... I mean, good, they, look, Joe Buck's fine. He does it. But it seems weird. I'm so used to him calling baseball, too, when it's a big game. It will be kind of odd that he's over at ESPN now. And it, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little strange. But, yeah, good for them, man. Yeah. Well, and they're going to have uh, uh, Kurt Herbstreak. He's going to do some Thursday night NFL games. But like, I feel like they've year, been warming his ass up for the last two or three seasons. They, well, right? people love Herbie. And this year, him and Fowler did a playoff game. Right. But for me, I'm so used to Saturday night watching like the I big know. college. It just like I remember texted a, a buddy and was just he, I was like, "Is this strange for you too?" Like I'm watching NFL football, but it's it's college guys. And he was like, "Yeah, it took me like a quarter to realize like this something's off here." Right. So but he does a great job, man. I'm I'm happy that Herb Street's getting getting a little love. Uh, there's no official word on the salaries, but it's reported that Aikman is making. Ninety-two million dollars over five years. And so Bucks, more than he made as an NFL Super Bowl winning quarterback. They make more than My they make more than most quarterbacks. God, most right NFL right. players. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're they're. And I'm sure Joe Buck is doing well. Oh, I think Joe Buck's doing just fine for himself. It's kind of weird though. This will be their 21st season uh, in the booth together, which ties them with Pat Summerall and John Madden for really? most ever. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I mean it makes sense when you say it out loud, but in my mind, it does not seem they, that well, long. And because of that, their families have grown up together. Sure. Like their wives are friends, or girlfriends and wives are yeah. friends. <laughs> they, they, I mean, they, they, they legitimately are friends off the field, or off the, out of the booth. Yeah, and that's a, that's a tight world, too. Like, sure. we, we, 
we all have a mutual friend, and like he's in some inner circles, and he's like, dude, he's like, man, like Aikman, James Brown from CBS Sports, mm-hmm. he's like, when they're all together, like he's like, he's like, it's like hanging out with like just like old buddies, and they're mm-hmm. just riffing each other. Now they're nice steakhouses and having a cocktail, but he's like, he's like, it's unbelievable. But and it's of course, weird. It's like, you know, like the late night talk show host, right? You know, rival networks, blah, blah, blah. But like even when COVID hit, they all got together because they're all friends. They like what the other ones do, right? And say, hey, man, how do we want to handle this? Why don't we come up with one general idea for all of us? And it just kind of blew my mind. Like, God damn, you don't think, you know, here's Corden and uh, Stephen Colbert from CBS. And they're talking to Myers and... Fallon. Fallon from NBC. And, and then they bring in Kimmel, moderated. you know, from ABC just to say, hey, man, how, how do you guys want to do this? Because yeah. you all hang out. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Everyone anyway. agreed, let's go home. <laughs> right. Right. And that's the problem. Uh, and I don't know if you brought this up to me the other day. Well, TV smart enough to realize that people have the ability to change channels. So, uh, I, yep. you know, I, mean, you know yeah. I like I I watch a lot of shows on a lot of networks. I'm not just I don't just leave it on one channel so, the entire time. Thank I'm you. not sure how you brought this up in conversation, but we were talking about Trevor Noah, I think. Correct. Now, I watched Trevor Noah the last two nights. He still does not have a live studio on. He's got to get it back to an audience. It's it, the way they edit it. It's so fast-paced. You don't even have time to sit. The audience will laugh and give the the host a break to be able to breathe for a minute because he's getting the reaction. He'll also do, you know, a physical reaction to their reaction. Right. Takes a second, resets. Trevor Noah is just boom, 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 boom. And you're laughing at a joke and you realize if you laughed at a joke, you just missed two more. And then they just kept going. Yeah, I, this is what I was saying a couple weeks ago. Ra- it's too rapid fire. Right, like, I like Trevor Noah. I like The Daily Show. But I was like, oh, this, this it's, it's, it's not good anymore. It's a little tough to, yeah, it's just tougher to watch. You're right. And there's no reaction. And then he, right, the way they edit, he just keeps going and going. You're just like, okay. It's, it's, it's really, it's really. Or you miss the joke. And then like 30 seconds later, I'm like, oh, damn, that was a good joke. That was right. funny. But you're right. still trying to figure out the next one because he's on to that one. That he, it, it's just too fast for that time of night for me. Maybe I'm too high. I don't know. It's just. Yeah, I again, I I just think when he's in front of an audience, that'll sound and it would be back to normal. That, that's that's what I'm saying. But like, we're, what, we know he's his the show, one right. guy that hasn't. I think he's the one. There's only one left, right? I think Noah's the only one left. Really? Stephen Colbert, live audience? Now? He's live, yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Tons of stuff, like we said. Tons of basketball on if you want to watch that. That's CBS, True TV, and TNT. When you find True TV, just save it. You're going to love Impractical Jokers. <laughs> yeah. It's on there all the time. Yes. Like I, I, I bet this weekend they're like, Jesus, we're not on the TV for a change. <laughs> so check that out. If That's what I'm going to TV, remember it because you'll never find it again. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to The Men's Room. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. Bro, gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way. Way. Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way. Can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact me today at advocateslaw.com. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. A Tesla employee is fired after posting a video of his self-driving car driving off the road. Meanwhile, three generations of babies are born on St. Patty's Day in one family. That's an impressive load. Refrigerator repairman of Florida State steals $30,000 from a man's fridge. Boy slams into slaw zip lining with dad while sliding down a ridge. And a South Carolina bill aimed at curbing people sitting on alligators. It's time for your headlines. 
Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. All right, I'm Tom Trevor. We're going to the lovely world of the internet where a video was shared to TikTok of a harrowing ziplining adventure. Yeah. We're assuming that the pair in the video are father and son out ziplining in the wilderness, but just seconds into their voyage, the boy's rigging gets caught on something that's covering the line. As the father co- uh, father comes crashing into him, dangling in the air, the camera pans to the culprit, a sloth that had been making its way up the line. <laughs> Though perturbed, the animal does not seem harmed in the incident as it continues its stride down the wire. Okay, I brought this up earlier in the office, but but honest to God, right? So the kid's ziplining, the sloth is fine, the kid's fine. Sure. But you crashed into it. I'm just curious, what did that sloth smell like? Right. Because he went face first into a sloth. Right. And this is a wild sloth. This yeah, isn't I mean, like, it's hey, this. it's bath day sloth. This is out in the middle of the woods. Yeah, he's wasted. I wow. just feel like they would smell worse than most animals. Yeah. I don't know that to be true, but just because they move so slow, I'm like, uh Maybe like, just that thought of laziness. Just, you know that there's a stink right. that comes with laziness. They didn't well, smell that, straight up like Mio. That's the other issue. It's a sloth. Like, he ain't moving fast. Nope. I was surprised because the father in the video, you just hear him saying, well, I'll just wait for him. I'm like, it's it's a sloth. Yeah. Like, right, I mean, he's got a whole lot waiting less Waiting for a sloth. But the thing about sloths, in spite of those crazy, wicked, like, claws, oh, I, yeah. you know, they don't really do anything. Like, I, I, I don't know. I just thought to myself, like, I would remove it from the line, not drop it and plummet it to its death, <laughs> but put it on the line behind me. Right. Like, I'm not waiting for a sloth. I have heard, though, that... As slow as they move, touching a sloth out in the wild is not the best of idea because they can move faster than you know, and they got those claws for a reason. I know they can move faster than you know because the what was the study like three or four years ago? Sure. So where sloths live, tigers also live. So apex predator and the slowest moving thing on earth. Right. But when it's mating season and a male sloth hears a female sloth give the call, they jump the hell out of that He's tree, down. yeah, book ass to a river, you like bet. go swim. They're like, I'm getting me some butt, like a 16 year old with a driver's license. Exactly. Man. You ever see that video of the sloth that they set down on the road? It yeah. is the most terrifying oh, yeah. thing. It looks like something out of a nightmare. But it does. Wait, wait, look, but what? It, it still looks like an approachable animal. Like yeah. if I saw it on the zip line, I'd be like, dude, just hold on, I'm going to grab you. We're just going to go, right? But then he'd probably freak out. Yes, because he's going so fast on the zip line. Then I drop a sloth. It's like a what is this nightmare. video of a sloth on the road? There, I don't remember. It's just somebody yeah. that found one. No, but they, honestly, they, they stopped traffic because he was just walking very slowly. So it was like they just get out to make sure he can get across. How approachable is that? Well, Taryn just went down and hung out with a sloth in Costa Rica. Yeah, a wild sloth. Yeah. That's probably but where what's that, the one thing we know about Taryn. That's probably where that zipline was. What's the one thing we know about Taryn? First day she started here. Animal freak. Sloth lover. You okay. can tell. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, in other news, authorities in South Carolina are great. freak sloth lover. That's why you guys, oh, hang, that's why you guys hang out all the time. You're the sloth loving Terran Sloth Ted Smith. I'm going to start saying that to her. Authorities in South sloth Carolina lover. are cracking down on some animal harassment. Following an incident back in 2020 that sparked community outrage, they're now raising the fines for those that harass or entice alligators in the area. The outrage comes from a video that made the rounds online of people taking turns pretending to ride the gator as they took pictures as it sauntered its way about the area. Ronnie James. Ride the gator! Right. <laughs> That's just stupid. Uh, like, yeah, don't charge them. Let, eventually, they'll understand the error of their ways. Yes, they will. I'm a dinosaur. I'm going to eat you. More you have a bulldog riding the gator. Ooh. For the Georgia fans. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, they have a law in Florida, but once you cross that state line, they're like, the hell with these gators. Right. Ride them. We don't like gators in here. <laughs> My official gator hate them. Yeah. And that is it for your headlines with that. Mike Hawkins up. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Some men's room happy hours up next exclusively on the Odyssey app. It is a dirty big dummy time. Come on. Yes, indeed. It is all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch for 180 seconds or so. So until then, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake. Stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A Double Flush production. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.